Hello, first upload in 11 months. So it's been a long while and we're gonna be tracking tropical cyclones here. As I said in the community post yesterday, we're now looking at a tropical cyclone threat for Northern um, Australia. And we're also gonna take a look at this cyclone threat for Mauritius. So we've got a lot to get through here. If you do end up enjoying this video, please do consider liking and subscribe as well because these videos are coming out regularly now. I found my passion once again. So thank you so much and let's get started. So we're now looking at this tropical cyclone threat, which you can see on screen right now um, on the IR satellite imagery. Um, there's a lot of thunderstorm activity um, currently north of the Northern Territory. Now this thunderstorm over here, as you can see where the cursor is south of Timor, this one's the one that we're expecting to become the strong tropical cyclone and pick up the name of Kiralee. Um, This one here could be a category three tropical cyclone in around seven days time as it moves kind of parallel to the WA coastline actually. I'll show you the forecast models later. Um, and it could impact Broome, places like Fitzroy Crossing, Halls Creek, Broome, and even into the mining communities around Marble Bar, Newman, uh, Telfer, that sort of area, Tom Price. We could be seeing cyclone impacts and definitely very heavy rainfall as a result of this tropical cyclone. We're also going to be taking a look at a cyclone threat in the Gulf of Tarpentaria. We could be seeing a relatively strong tropical cyclone up there, actually, maybe a Category 4 on the Australian scale, so a Category 2 on the South of the Simpson scale. And as I pan over towards uh, the Southwest Indian Ocean, we've also got two possible tropical cyclones there. So it's getting busy there as well. Um, and we'll take a look at those cyclones later. But I'm gonna start off by showing you the wind forecast for uh, what could become tropical cyclone Kiralee. Now, it doesn't really, nothing really happens until about Friday or Saturday when you can see this tropical low starting to form in the bottom part of Gulf, maybe about 150 or so kilometers towards the east northeast of Colombo and about due north from Kununurra actually. And you can see it does wrap itself up relatively quickly actually by about Saturday. We're already looking at a tropical cyclone north of Columba Roo. Yeah, Saturday about 2 p.m. We're looking at this getting named tropical cyclone Kiralee. And in fact, on Sunday, it looks like it's already a Category 2 strength system. In fact, late Sunday, it's almost a Category 3 strength system as it approaches its final landfall spot of Derby, or its initial landfall spot of Derby, I should say. Um, and it, yeah, it moves completely parallel to the WA coast, which is the reason that this cyclone is not going to become anything absolutely absurdly strong, because if it got itself in the open Indian Ocean, we could be looking at like a historically strong storm. The sea surface temperatures are like 32 degrees Celsius there, so it's jet fuel kind of conditions for a tropical cyclone to move over, which is relatively concerning because later on in the year when the sea surface temperatures get hotter, um, it's expected that cyclones will move through here and then line up the WA coastline and there's nothing stopping storms even right now getting to category five status and belting the West Australian coastline. So that's gonna be something we really need to watch for in March or April. Um, and yeah, you bet we'll be keeping you covered on this channel, so please do consider subscribing. And then by about Monday or so, you can see it fully moves inland. It's still a cyclone on Monday evening as it passes towards the southeast of Broome, actually dropping a lot of rainfall on Broome, which I'll jump to a little bit later on. And you can also see that low pressure system starting to wrap itself up in the Gulf of Carpentaria as it moves um, offshore from Kakadu on the northern extremities of the Northern Territory. And it's about Tuesday or Wednesday that it stalls and then bounces back and becomes very strong. And you can see down here the cyclone moving over Marble Bar, which will be tropical cyclone Kiralee at this stage, north of Newman. And as I'll get to a little bit, in a little bit, a lot of rainfall expected as a result of this tropical cyclone. There's going to be places inland that pick up over 500 millimetres of rainfall. So a very concerning sign indeed. And yeah, you can see the one um, over uh, the Northern Territory, it bounces back, becomes about a Category 4 cyclone, a very strong Category 3 cyclone at least. So comparable in strength to Cyclone Jasper, a very concerning forecast indeed, and as it makes landfall, um, yeah, it also drops an incredible amount of rainfall. In fact, the access model daring to predict up to two meters of rainfall, which is a year's worth of rainfall, even for the tropics. It's a ridiculous volume of rainfall um, in this corner of Australia. So yeah, uh, quite a significant rainfall forecast, that's for sure. But we will take a look at rainfall right now. Um, around Newman, um, as the cyclone makes passage over the next 10 days, places expecting over 700 millimeters of rain in, or up to 700 millimeters of rain in places. Newman itself, 550. Um, I believe Telfer itself probably about 100 millimetres, Marble Bar about 70, um, and then up towards Broome another 500. Where this cyclone makes landfall initially on the WA coastline, probably close to 1,000 in fact, because in some places there's up to 1,000 millimetres expected, and in fact actually in some places more than 1,200 millimetres expected. So yet again, a year's worth of rainfall in tropical Western Australia, and also 
maybe a year or even two years worth of rainfall if this forecast was to verify across Western Australia. But it's the concerning amount of rainfall. It lies up in the Northern Territory or just offshore. Look at that. That's just stupid amounts of rainfall. 1,900 millimetres. In fact, you might find one or two spots with over two metres of rainfall in here. So just a ridiculous volume of rainfall as a result of this tropical cyclone that's meant to make passage through there. So the wet season in full swing, let me tell you, as these cyclones move through. So that's a little bit concerning, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, apart from that, looking quite busy across Australia, this is only one of the up to five model forecasts that we can take a look at. And the rest of the model forecasts are kind of calling for a very wacky situation where the cyclone stalls in the Bonaparte Gulf of offshore from Western Australia, and then very slowly tracks inland over the Northern Territory and holds maybe a very weak category one intensity. So I don't think that that forecast is necessarily going to verify. Um, it'd be a bit of a weird forecast if it was because it's not a common track for a cyclone to take. It's a relatively common track for a tropical low to take, however. So um, I wouldn't be absolutely shocked if that was to happen, but considering the accesses uh, perfection with the forecast for Cyclone Jasper. I reckon that's the model that we should be following right now. And especially considering that's just a very common track for cyclones to take, I would not be discounting the Access G3 model whatsoever at this point. But all models are on board with something spinning up in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So that's a very likely scenario. Um, and also this is a very likely scenario over in Western Australia. It's just where this storm ends up tracking and the conditions that locations receive that we're not 110% sure of right now. And I will also touch on this system in the open Indian Ocean, still in the Australian region. It does briefly become a cyclone next Wednesday into Thursday, but it's very weak and it dies off before it can really become anything in the um, southwest Indian Ocean. And it would actually have a shot at becoming a strong cyclone as it moves towards Mauritius. But I think the only thing that stops it is this monster system that we're expecting um, uh, over around Mauritius or Reunion, and I'm taking a look at the GFS model right now. They have been calling for a direct hit on Mauritius, however, they've since backed it off a little bit, and they call for this storm to really spin itself up Tuesday and into Wednesday, rapidly intensifying into a monster tropical cyclone Monday and Tuesday. Um, before it approaches Mauritius and then makes that turn. And we're looking at here a Category 3 or Category 4 tropical cyclone on the Saffir Simpson scale. So a strong Category 5 on the Australian scale, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, it would be a very powerful and dangerous system if it was to get itself over the land. And also a secondary system um, in the um, Mozambique Channel here approaching Madagascar by around next Wednesday or Thursday. And there's also good model consensus on this situation as per um, other forecast models as well. The Eastern will be calling for a slightly weaker scenario, but they're still calling for that direct hit on Reunion actually, and that would be cyclone conditions for Mauritius. So if you are in Mauritius, make sure you're watching the forecast very closely because there's a lot that can happen um, as a result of these tropical cyclones. But yeah, that's five potential tropical cyclones across um, the Australian region and the Southwest Indian Ocean over the next 10 days. So it's going to get very, very busy, that's for sure, um, if these forecasts are to verify. So we've got to watch this very closely and we've got to take all necessary precautions to make sure that um, these cyclones aren't too damaging when they do approach the coast. So make sure you're staying tuned to the officials, the Bureau of Meteorology, um, Matteo France. Make sure you're staying tuned to me as well because I'll be giving you the latest on this channel. Um, and I'll be telling you how to prepare and the necessary steps that you should be taking to prepare. And there's no better way to stay tuned than by subscribing. And I really do thank you if you do subscribe because we're getting close on 6,000 subscribers and your support is greatly appreciated. And this channel is back and is running for 2024. So make sure you stick around because I've got a lot, a lot to say about Australia's weather and the world's weather as well. So if that's your cup of tea, make sure you are tuning in. But yeah, one last look at rainfall accumulation from the Eastern WF, and you can see a lot of rainfall expected in tropical Australia. In fact, there's hardly any spots, any um, uh, in the Northern Northern Territory or in the Queensland area in the Cape York Peninsula that don't pick up over 200 millimetres of rain in the next 10 days. And it's a similar forecast as per the access model across Northern Western Australia. A lot of spots picking up over uh, 200 millimetres of rain and also one or two spots in excess of 500 millimetres. And if the right bands get ashore and this cyclone is slow moving enough onshore in Western Australia, then there's places that will pick up in excess of a thousand millimetres. And that's not totally unprecedented in terms of tropical cyclones, but it's a lot of rainfall and it will cause some significant flooding and a lot of river basins. So make sure you, if you are in an area prone to flooding, then uh, you are watching this forecast very closely because there is a lot that can happen. Um, 
from these systems. And I'm going to end off this video briefly by taking a look at satellite imagery around uh, the tropics. You can see this very broad low pressure system starting to develop across um, the northern northern territory regions around the um, area of interest that we're monitoring right now um, in the Timor Sea. This one's already starting to develop quite nicely. It's got some pretty nice convection around it. And this is associated with what will become uh, the tropical cyclone or at least tropical cyclone Kiralee. And you can already see these thunderstorms here. There's more thunderstorms than normal approaching the Gulf of Carpentaria now. I can't really say if this is directly associated with the cyclone that is, that's expected to spin up here, but I wouldn't be ruling it out either. So we'll be watching this uh, very closely because as these thunderstorms develop, we'll be seeing these cyclones and the tropical, the associated tropical lows really start to develop as well. So uh, that's something that we'll be keeping a very close eye on indeed. And you can already see Invest 96S over here. Actually, it's got a very nice center of circulation. It's a very small center of circulation, but you might be able to see it as I zoom obnoxiously close to this cyclone. That little curved band feature there um, uh, that I'm highlighting with the cursor and the convection firing over that center there, which is actually pretty good convection, nearly minus 70 degrees Celsius in one or two spots. So this cyclone might actually be, or this system might actually be pretty close to attaining cyclone status. So I can't wait to see what ASCAT has to say about it. You can see a lot of uh, thunderstorm activity along the uh, tropical zone around the equator. There's also thunderstorm activity associated with an area of interest offshore from Sri Lanka. Um, but yeah, there's not too much in the way of thunderstorm activity associated with the storm that exp that's expected to, to develop in the southwest Indian Ocean, rather, or in the Mozambique Channel. But I expect that will start to get its act together in around two to three days' time. So we'll be watching out for that pretty closely. And the only other thing that I can be bothered mentioning really is the amount of thunderstorm activity across Australia, especially Queensland. A lot of those isolated pulse thunderstorms around uh, the Queensland coastline, and in fact, one se severe thunderstorm that dumped 130 millimetres of rain in three hours in a suburb in Brisbane. I can't remember the name. I believe it was Darlington. They received an absolute drenching from that thunderstorm that moved through about an hour or two ago. So um, there is the risk of flooding still from these pulse thunderstorms. And don't discount pulse thunderstorms or small and isolated thunderstorms as being non-severe because they can dump some pretty significant rainfall and weather conditions, that's for sure. But yeah, a lot to keep track of in the tropics, especially around Australia and the Southwest Indian Ocean. If you haven't already, please do consider, consider subscribing. Your support really does mean a lot. And if you did enjoy the video, please do consider leaving a like as well. But that's all for me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.